Hello folks, and welcome to a uh, particularly rather quiet late calculator video featuring an interesting machine from, uh, this time from Denmark actually. This is a Bonn Context 30, which is a desktop calculator featuring 10 key serial input and a uh, small accumulator register, a single counting register that's only ever used for division, which is a fairly interesting feature in its own right on this machine. It has semi-automatic multiplication and also it comes with addition and subtraction. But without further ado, let's just have a quick look at the thing and see the uh, general process of it. So if I just input some numbers, one, two, three, plus three, two, one, and we'll see the result 444 being read off in the accumulator. And we can ignore this dial because it's rather quite useless. We clear the machine by pulling this thing to the right, which clears the input register. And we clear the accumulator by pressing the clear key, like so. So just some more operations. Four, five, six plus, plus one, two, three, five, seven, nine, minus, let's say, 789. And we'll see we end up with the uh, complement numbers in the accumulator. I believe this machine was meant to be a cheaper and more space effective variant of the um, other calculators I've shown you thus far. Uh, as you can probably see from the other videos I've posted, the other machines are rather quite bulky and tremendously heavy. Now, from one thing to the next, this machine is also capable of uh, multiplication, which is semi-automatic, which is done by inputting the multiplicand, pressing the multiplication mode key down, and then inputting the, uh, the number as, uh, what would you say, big endian. So if I take 60, that I just input times 60, I do times, and the machine will cycle six times, well, adding to the, well, adding the multiplicand really, then stepping one step to the left for the uh, next uh, order of significance. So 3,600 from 60 times 60. If we then take this number and clear the input, 3,600, and we clear the uh, output, and what we land with then is 3,600 times 24, Remember, it's big endian, so four, two, eighty-six thousand four hundred. We can clear the input again. And input eighty-six thousand four hundred. Then clear the output and multiply it by three hundred and sixty-five. So, big endian again. No. Yes, big endian. So five, six, three. Hmm. Did I do that right? I'm not entirely sure. Eighty six thousand four hundred times five. Yes, 
Yes, it, it bears mentioning that I seem to notice that there have been some slight calculation errors in the machine. That could be for any reason. I haven't really opened it up just yet. It's... Uh, There we go. I have to have a bit of a firm hand when multiplying, it seems. So, now that I've aggressively pressed the buttons, we end up with 31,536,000, which is, as before, the number of seconds in a year. Now, the reason for this, I can only speculate. However, the machine was initially designed to be a cheaper alternative to conventional calculators that had the internals made chiefly out of metal. This one is a lot lighter as a result and from what I've come to understand a fair few of the internals in it are made out of plastic and similar slightly cheaper materials because this is indeed a later generation calculator. Of course, the internal parts being plastic means that uh, we end up with a machine that's um, slightly less durable in the face of uh, the, the ages. So, I mean, it, it's still an old machine. I'd pin the design somewhere at the 70s, but uh, I'm not entirely sure. Either way, onwards to the final step, which is division, which is carried out in an interesting fashion. What you do is you input the dividend 355 five, and you press this division tabulate key and you add. So now we see we have our 355 here in the accumulator and we proceed on to the next or the divisor. So one, one, three. We step, hit the division mode key, and then here's the interesting bit. The division is semi-automatic. So I push the minus key, and it'll work out the um, first figure of the quotient. In this case, the number three. So here is a conveniently placed paper and pen. Let me see if it will write. It will. So I write down the three. Then I press the tabulate right key to figure out the next digit in the quotient, which is a one. One. And here is where the machine will start acting weird because there is some issue with the carry sense at higher digits of precision. And as you can see, it seems to think this digit is a six. Not quite right, perhaps. And as a result, the remaining part of the um, calculation becomes off as well. So we can put our decimal number at the number of digits in the uh, dividend plus one minus the number of digits in the uh, Divisor. So the number of decimals is 3 plus 1 minus 3, which it gives us one integer. So we put the dash here and then we politely cross out this stuff because it's utter garbage. So that concludes it for the demonstration of the Bon contents 30. I hope to have a look at the internals and see why it's doing the way it is. 
I could be a late sensed carrier or something from further to the side in the machine, which uh, would be a very early generation race condition. But all that is for another time. And as a bonus scene, we'll have the Heyman Manus R demonstrate how an actual division for Pi is done. So, use the thumb wheels to set the divisor, or dividend rather, 355. Set the divisor, 113. Change the mode to division by pushing this button in. Reverse the counter gear rotation. Shift the carriage all the way to the right, and we're good to go. It bears mentioning that uh, this is one of those metal machines I was talking about. And subsequently, it performs very nicely. I don't think that the Danish design keeps the stereotypical German efficiency demonstrated by Crystal Heyman's machine. It's a very nice and rare piece and I'm incredibly happy to have it. And there we go. We see that the number pi is actually 3.5. One four one five nine two nine, as has been demonstrated so many times before. I hope you enjoyed this video, and always feel free to give me a comment or a like or even a subscribe if you're interested in seeing more of this type of thing at some unspecified later date. On that note, once again, thank you for watching. I hope you have a tremendously pleasant day and don't hesitate to leave any feedback or questions in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. Do take care.